Okay, Leviticus 9. This is a short chapter. A couple of things we get to look at in here, and something pretty miraculous actually happens in this chapter. So watch for that as it comes up. Uh, but now we have Aaron and his sons starting to perform the ordinances. Remember last chapter, Moses demonstrated it. Now Aaron and his sons are starting to take over to perform these ordinances. So Aaron makes an atonement by sacrifice for himself and all Israel. He and his sons offer sacrifices. The glory of the Lord appears to all. Fire from the Lord consumes the offerings on the altar. All right, verse one, it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said unto Aaron, take thee a young calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before the Lord. And unto the children of Israel, thou shalt speak saying, take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering. And also a bullock and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before the Lord and a meat offering mingled with oil for today the Lord will appear unto you. So remember, he consecrated them for seven days and then they would, they would do a shift or they would change things out. Uh, and this is the eighth day, basically. So after that consecration, now they're being asked, it's your turn to do more of this. And so they want to, to do this for the Lord because something special is coming. So do these sacrifices because the, as he says right here in verse four, for today, the Lord will appear unto you. That's important. What would happen if it was told, okay, like an apostle came to your area and said, guess what guys, here's what I need you to do. I need you to do this and this and this and this and this. I need you to read so many chapters in your scriptures. I need you to get your temple recommend set up. I need you to do this and this and this. I need you to delete the stuff, you know, out of your home. I need you to change this and this and this. I need you to do this and that. If he came up with a bunch of things and says, because the Lord is coming, if you'll get this ready, would you do it? That would be an interesting question. And you don't have to answer it in the comments or anything. Uh, but think about that, okay? If you were asked to do a bunch of things today <clears throat> because the Lord would come, what kinds of things would you change in your life? What would you do different if you believe that the Lord was coming to meet with you? And the reason I ask that is because if you do those things, the Lord will come to you. Maybe not literally, maybe not in person, like Joseph Smith got that uh, vision, but he will be closer to you. Not that he's moving closer to you, but by doing those things, you have moved closer to God. That is becoming more holy. This is exactly what President Nelson is wanting to teach us these days. To help us out is to move ourselves closer to God. Okay, so think about that. What would you sacrifice? What would you change about your life? If you were going to, if the Savior was going to come to the next sacrament meeting or state conference or whatever, what would you change so that you could go to that event? I would recommend and challenge you to change that now so that you can move closer to Christ anyways and have his spirit with you more in your everyday life. So if you want, feel free to add into the comments what you think about that. What would you change? <clears throat> and maybe even uh, a little while later, how have you changed by going through that challenge? How has that impacted your life as you come closer to your Savior? So just a fun little, little challenge to do. All right, let's just jump back in here to Leviticus 9. And uh, let's see, verse 5. And they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. Now that's, they're all there standing. When they, when they say standing before the Lord, that's kind of standing before the tabernacle and, and the, the smaller buildings inside the tabernacle of the congregation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. And Moses said unto Aaron, go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering and make an atonement for thyself and for the people and offer the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as the Lord commanded. Aaron therefore went unto the altar and slew the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him and he dipped his finger in the blood 
and put it on the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the bottom of the altar. But the fat and the kidneys and the call above the liver of the sin offering, he burnt upon the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. And now just, again, I want you to uh, reiterate here, if this sounds strange, then please go back and watch the previous videos that explain each one of these types of sacrifices, why they did it, what was the point of it. Those, you know, we went into a little more detail on it in the previous chapters, because it, it'll help you make a lot more sense of these chapters and, and some of the subsequent ones moving forward as well. Uh, let's see, verse 11, and the flesh and the hide he burnt with fire without the camp. And he slew the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood which he sprinkled round about upon the altar. And they presented the burnt offering unto him with the pieces thereof and the head, and he burnt them upon the altar. And he did wash the inwards and the legs and burnt them upon the burnt offering on the altar. And he brought the people's offering and took the goat, which was the sin offering for the people, and slew it, and offered it for sin as the first. And he brought the burnt offering and offered it according to the manner. And he brought the meat offering and took a handful thereof and burnt it upon the altar beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning. Remember, meat offering doesn't mean beef. It means bread, it means flour. Remember that. Verse 18, he also slew the bullock and the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people. And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood and he, which he sprinkled upon the altar round about. And the fat of the bullock of the ram, the rump, that which covereth the inwards, and the kidneys, and the call above the liver. And they put the fat on the, upon the breasts, and he burnt the fat upon the altar. And the breasts and the right shoulder, Aaron waved for a wave offering before the Lord as Moses commanded. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them, and came down from the offering of the sin offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offerings. So then they, he did all this. Mo, Aaron has now done all this, just as Moses has done in the past. And they're preparing themselves. Okay, remember, the whole point of the teachings prior to the time of Christ coming is to prepare our minds to be ready for the great sacrifice that the Savior makes for us. He is the Lamb of God. He is the one who was without blemish, who sacrificed his life for us to help us in our life. So everything about this law of Moses is pointing to Christ and his atonement and what he is going to do. Since the Savior has come and has fulfilled his responsibility as the Lamb of God, we don't think forward to Christ. We think about and remember what he has done for us. That's what the sacrament is for, is to remember what he already has done for us. So just a very important distinction in how the gospel is taught, okay? The gospel is the same, but how we teach it, the emphasis is a little different because of the different times that we are in. And that's okay. That's totally cool. Very, very cool thing. All right, so verse 23, And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. So Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle congregation, came out, blessed the people, the glory of the Lord appeared, basically. So there, that could be like a cloud coming down, a pillar of fire coming down, like they've seen already. But they, they knew God was there. They knew he was present. Maybe not something they saw. It could be that they saw something like it was much brighter around them or something. Uh, and probably something that they felt the presence of God around them as well. And then a fire came out from before the Lord. So probably from that, the uh, Holy of Holies, the inner tabernacle area out, consumed the altar, uh, upon the altar, the burnt offering and the fat. So that was a surprise that, holy cow, this fire comes out and just consumes everything that was on the altar. So that's amazing. And now, of course, everybody shouted. They're probably surprised. Holy cow. Oh, my gosh. Like a, big, like a flamethrower coming out. And then they fell on their faces. Now, that's, of course, because they were afraid that if they looked upon the face of God, they would die. So you didn't look at the face of God directly. So they bowed down 
to reverence him and to hide their faces from him. So what a powerful experience. What would it have been like to be there and see that? If you have any thoughts or ideas on that, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear your comments on that. And uh, again, now that they're putting this in practice, there are some challenges that will be arising as they put, as the priests do these types of offerings all the time. We're going to learn about those here. I think it's in the next chapter that we actually learn more about some of those challenges that they face. So stay tuned for that one.